Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Good day to everyone around the world, and um, good day, good morning to uh, co-hosts um, Erica Gratton and Kyle Ballard. Say good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right, excellent. So, um, lots of lots of cool stuff. Lots and lots of cool stuff. Today, we you know we've been scratching our heads and trying to figure out what a great topic would be um, for this show and. We were very fortunate to get a great interview uh, lined up with um, Richard Fortas, uh, new gunner, uh, excuse me, new gunner, new guitarist for Guns N' Roses, and um, fascinating uh, fella. He's got a tremendous career behind him and and a tremendous career ahead of him. Um, and the reason we bring Richard on is because he too is a runner and. We thought it would be a fascinating interview to have someone that has basically lived his life on the road as a rock and roll star and how he maintains his fitness. And as I understand it, uh, yet to be uh, discovered, but I I, I believe that uh, Richard is an avid runner. And um, it was interesting a moment ago before we got on the air, Eric had brought to my attention that my name being Richard and uh, interviewing a Richard could be a little confusing, so please, people, bear with us. I think that uh, I don't know how we're going to handle it. Uh, Eric, if you come up with a really good idea between now and when we get him on the phone. Uh, right, right. Yeah, maybe, please, maybe, maybe, Richard, maybe Richard has a, a stage name <laughs> we can go yeah, by. <laughs> yeah. well, 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 we'll put it to him, and we'll, we'll see what he thinks. He may there want to know him as Mr. Fortis. I don't know. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, looking back on his career, you know, and I, I've done a tremendous amount of research on uh, Mr. Fortis over the past week, and uh, he's been around. I mean, this guy has played guitar with everybody. He's toured with Rihanna. He was, he's toured with uh, Julio Iglesias. He's uh, uh, been uh, a, a staple in, in what was the Psychedelic Furs. Uh, he was with a band that evolved from that that he founded with Richard Butler, who was um, – at Psychedelic Furs, and they did a, a group called Love Spit Love. Um, oh, and yes, now yes. he's landed with uh, uh, Guns N' Roses. And, you know, here's a guy that's uh, been classically trained. Uh, he played the violin. He played the cello. And uh, he could do just about anything with strings. Sure sounds uh, like I don't it. I you guys were aware of all of that. No. No, see, it... Uh, you know, and and I didn't even know that he was an avid runner. But you know, we'll we'll ask him all these questions. But you know, how long are these shows that these guys get up there and, and they entertain us for? You know, you got to have that stamina. It's got to come from somewhere, right? Well, uh, that's very true. Um, and I I have worked with. Uh, I, I have to say that I have worked with rock stars in the past. Uh, I actually did some work with uh, Alicia Moore, who is more uh, famously referred to as Pink. And uh, oh. to on her some years back when we had her on a on a fitness regimen, and uh, you know these people, they have a tough lifestyle. I mean, you yeah. know, I I got to be honest with you, a little you know, a little little disclosure. I mean, I had a pretty uh, uh, rock and roll growing up in my in, you know, uh, it's being in your blood. Of- <laughs> You know, my my uh, remember the pictures that come up that said proof of hair. We actually saw, I actually had some right. length there. You know, uh, <laughs> you're rocking the long hair, huh, Richard? Yeah, just you know, trying to get through the day. You know, in, in back then, you know, the partying all night long, and uh, I just couldn't even imagine to be dedicated to that type of a lifestyle where mm-hmm. you know, you're in it. You don't really have much option but to you know to try to survive it, and then have to be a genius on stage. The following day, yes. um, and day after you, day after day after day, it's just you like you are a yeah, you're a performer. This is well, this yeah. is what you get paid to do is to entertain. So if you're rough on your body and and you know they've got long days and keep odd hours to begin with, just because of the lifestyle, being in a different city every day. Although I think Richard's gonna let us in on um, his next gig having a residency somewhere where you're there for multiple nights in one city, but typically you're in and out. 
you know, you roll in one day, you set up camp, you put on a show, and you, you roll up, and you're off to the next city. I mean, it's a tough lifestyle. Yeah, I couldn't it's even tough. imagine. And I've tried to speculate. You know, I, I, uh, you, know you alluded to the residency tour coming up. They're, uh, you know, let's just go ahead and share it. They're, they're planning to, yeah. to hole up at the Hard Rock and basically take over the joint uh, in Las Vegas, and they're going to be there for basically a month. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, they have 12 performances slated over the course of that month. And I got to tell you, if if I don't get out of Las Vegas after three days, um, you know, I'm going to need therapy. It's just, right. Well, <laughs> which is probably a good good reason why he runs. <laughs> keep right. keep himself right. centered. You know. It's, um, yeah, you know, and it's funny because I actually worked in Las Vegas doing testing uh, in uh, the uh, as a contractor for the Las Vegas Athletic Clubs, and okay. uh, we would get up early and show up for our gigs after a rough, uh, a rough night at the casinos, and um, uh, it's a it's an odd lifestyle. The people that live it in is. Las Vegas, it, it just you know everybody's up all night and sleep all day kind of thing, and exactly. Uh, and then uh, I guess for pretty much that that is the case with the uh, the visitors anyway. Um, right. I assume there's other people that have a lifestyle where they they work during the day and they really don't visit the casinos. But you, know, you think um, people do do nine to five in Vegas? You think? You, you, know, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess I guess if you go to a restaurant, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of how it works, right? Well, they're but usually guess, open to the, again. The, the the whole the whole concept here is rock star runner. Uh, and hopefully we're going to get a couple more of these these cats uh, to come on and speak with us because it's interesting, you know. You got people that get up in the morning after a really, you know, uh, healthy lifestyle to begin with, and they're habitual about the way they they roll out of bed at five o'clock in the morning. They hit the trails or, or road and put in their run uh, before they start their work day, and you know it's a very traditional process for for us. And I just thought it was such an interesting view to have someone that is basically a, a globe trotter all over the world. I mean, just the yeah. jet lag alone between some of these concert dates has to be just brutal. It just has to be brutal. Yeah. And uh, I'd imagine as we season, you know, these guys aren't kids anymore. Uh, as as we season, um, you know, you settle into your skin, so to speak, and you start to find um, ways to, you know, try to, mitigate some of the the stresses that are associated with that kind of work and clearly you know going to for a, a cleansing run in the morning or in the afternoon or whenever it, it is they get a chance to do it has to be right. almost spiritual for them I, I would agree and you know going back to when you were talking about the folks that you know do the nine to five thing uh it, you know it is it's tough enough to stick to a routine and it, to be disciplined enough when we were saying, you know, you're traveling to usually a different city, uh, you know, every night on a on a bus, no less, you know, and um, to get up and throw those sneaks on and head out the bus, you know, it's um, it it takes some discipline, you know, to stick to it, and you know, what what's that inside Richard that's driving him to do that? You know, is it is it the clearing of the headspace? Is it does he find? Um, you know, new music out there on the trail. You know, is he inspired? Does it, you know, what what is it, you know? Um, but you know, it's something, something uh, that since you brought that up uh, yeah. about music on the trail, I was, uh, you know, just yesterday while I was pondering this, this interview, I'm curious to ask him, and if I don't ask, I, I hope you remember to ask him yourself. Okay. Uh, I want to know what is, what's on his playlist and his iPod. And in, if oh, in fact, right. what he listens to when he runs. I, or, or, or if he if he listens to music at all, right? Um, right. Uh, it's an interesting thought. I, I I I'm very curious to know. Um, it's you're right. I mean, it's is being being that his uh, profession is to make music. Um, I'm certain that he is inspired by uh, you know musicians in in the past and and present. But like you said, does he maybe? Um, you know, need to clear his head, so to speak, to to be inspired. So maybe he doesn't. Maybe he runs with his thoughts and no music. Right. You know. So yeah, interesting. Good, good. Uh, I'm no rock star, good. and uh, that's clearly what I do. I, I don't listen to music when I run. 
Um, uh, unfortunately for people around me, I, I may try to create some music, you know, and uh, destroy somebody else's music trying to sing it while I'm running. And, um, but uh, I've always been one to uh, shy away from, you know, the, the music while I'm running. Kyle, do you listen to music when you run? I do. Uh, I'm a slow jam fan. A slow jam fan? Yeah, kind of different, but I, I I crank it up and kind of find a groove with it. And I'll do the same thing. I'll sing out loud, and if you're running next to me, hopefully you have headphones in. Um, otherwise, it's not going to be pretty. Uh. <laughs> oh, running and singing. Do you? How about you, Erica? Do you listen to music when you run? I do not. And and as as you know, and our our audience prob you know if if they've tuned in long enough, they know that I tend to hit the trails and not the road. Um, so I I out of my own preference, like to be aware of my surroundings and and uh, you you know you you plug your ears with some tunes as, as much as it may help pass the miles and and maybe get you in a groove. Um, you're kind of closing yourself off, you know, to your surroundings, and I like to be more aware. So no, I I unplug when I go out. I do not listen to music, um, no. But, uh, you know, I, I know people that, uh, well, on our team, Richard, you know, when we go out on some of our, our longer runs, the first thing some of our team members do is throw those, those uh, you know, earplugs, or not earplugs. Yeah, I'm not into it, you know, especially with the mountain Neither. lines uh, that we, that we uh, hear about all the time. I want to know that's coming. I don't want to be but- surprised. <laughs> Well, I'm exactly. singing along and then just get my leg bit off by some creature. <laughs> Not gonna That's do what it. I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right. Or the, the, the looks shake like, bag. Uh, looks like we've got Richard on uh, in the green room right now. Awesome. And uh, there we go. So let me go ahead and bring him on. Hello? Good morning, Richard Fortas. How are you today? Good, thank you. How are you? Very Good morning, well. Richard. Uh, I want to thank you so much for uh, um, coming on and, and, and chatting with us a little bit th- this morning. And uh, I, I'd imagine you're, you're in St. Louis now? I am. And uh, did you run this morning? Uh, I haven't run yet. It's it's uh, raining, so I'm waiting it out because uh, I can. Bummer. So, so, Richard, we've been I don't know if you've been listening behind the scenes, but we've been kind of bantering about and just drawing conclusions about – um, you, you know, essentially the lifestyle that, that you've led for the past, oh, my God, uh, quite a long time. Um, yeah. And, and, um, and I have to tell you, I, I boned up. I, I, I did a tremendous amount of research on you. I feel like we went to school together. <laughs> okay. Seriously. I mean, I went back and uh, looked at uh, all the things that you've done uh, and uh, who you've done them with who you performed with, and uh, just really a, a, an amazing career. And, you know, my, my first notion is, uh, and, and I have to tell you, just, you know, we've never met, so just let me just kind of give you some insight. You know, uh, I will be 60 years old at the end of this, this year, and, um, you know, I, I was raised in the Midwest as well. And, um, you know, I came up during the Vietnam era. Uh, I'm a veteran, and, you know, I, I'm an old rocker. You know, I, I, I've always, if if someone was to ask me what type of genre of music I'm into, I would have to say I'm a rock and roll guy, classic rock. Mm-hmm. And uh, so looking back at some of the stuff you did, um, it's pretty cool. And um, But I can't imagine how in the hell uh, you can get through uh, a tour uh, and maintain sanity and try to keep your energy up for this stuff. Mm, yeah, we play very long shows as well. And so we play, okay. uh, we play about three hours a night. Yeah, with and, with no uh, break. Oh wow! Yeah. And so you you just got back from Europe, right? Yeah, yeah. We were there for three months. Wow. And uh, where where did you play? Ah, uh, yeah. Where didn't we play? We played all over Europe. Um, See if I can pull up an itinerary here. Yeah, it was a uh, pretty grueling run. Um, no pun intended. <laughs> what's that? I said no pun intended. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> hey, do you listen to music when you run? 
we, we were just having this discussion. I do not, but you know, um, I I run. I hit the trails. I'm not a I'm not a roadie. So um, you know, we were saying before you joined us, Richard, that you know I like to be aware of my surroundings. We were joking about mountain lions and you know yeah, <laughs> other wild. You know, I just I just left. Uh, Southern California. I lived in Los Angeles for the last five years, and running on trails, I couldn't run with uh, with music right. in either. And yeah. you know, to be honest, even in New York City, I don't run with uh, with music right. in. But but um, here, I can. I don't know. It really it, it really just varies for me. I'm curious about your playlist when you're running. Playlist? You know, I'm always I'm constantly looking for new inspiration. So. I'm always listening to new stuff. So when you say new stuff, uh, like bands that don't even exist yet, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, I'm always like trying to find something to something new and exciting. So I I listen to more uh, alternative type of college radio, I guess. But um, it really, I I also listen to classic rock as well. Right. I'm I'm pretty um, all over the board. Given the opportunity to make a decision aside from the environment, do you choose to run with music or do you choose not to? It really depends. It really depends on the um, on the day, really, and how much I want to focus. Because I can't. If I'm, I, I, my favorite thing is to run in, in new to find new routes when I'm in a new city, or you know, do familiar routes when I'm in. You know, there's some of my favorite. Run, you know, I've got my favorite runs all over the world, and uh, that is so cool. <laughs> it is, it's awesome, and it's the best yeah. way to see a city, you yeah. know. And right. when everybody else is uh, in the band is sleeping, I usually get up early and and run. Um, and it's it's just a great way to familiarize yourself with the environment where you are. Yeah, so I, I I agree. Uh, I see that uh, um, you know come. The end of October, you guys are going to uh, take up residency at the Hard Rock. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really looking forward to running in in, in the uh, desert, Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, the same, you know, being in the same spot the entire time. Yeah, I can't even, you know, I tell you, I, I, the way I roll is I have a tendency to try to wrap my head around the people that I, I, I get involved with, and uh, interesting thing about my business is because. Um, I have people that come to me from all walks of life for diagnostics. I do VO2 max testing, and I, you know, I, I work with athletes. And mm-hmm. uh, so usually, if somebody connects with me and I don't know who they are, I, I Google them to find out who they are, so I know who I'm dealing with. And for example, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, tomorrow night there's a middleweight championship fight. Sergio Martinez is fighting with uh, 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 Cesar Ch- Chavez's son. Julio Cesar Chavez's his son, and okay. uh, uh, Sergio is one of my clients. And so I get these people who will come into my world, and they're out of my world really, really quickly. And I guess what I'm getting at is uh, uh, just just the nature of, of uh, going into a foreign foreign element and make, taking up residence for a while and just kind of being locked down. Um, and I, I don't know. I, do you guys are you guys going to stay at the Hard Rock, or do you get out of there? Or how does that work? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're booked to stay there, um, but that's that's going to be. I can't imagine how that's going to be for six weeks. I mean, I have a really hard time being being in that hotel for three days. So yeah, that was we just I... played last New Year's there, and uh, we played two shows, and we were there for about. I don't know about a week, and that was that was about good. as much as I could take. Yeah, and I've been there to do records as well, you know, um, at the Palms Hotel. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There's something about Vegas. I mean, when when I was younger, I always felt lucky to leave there alive, you know. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, being older, I'm lucky to get out of there alive. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, That's, things have mel- mellowed rock. for me a bit in that way. I've had, yeah. some, I've had some really good times at the Hard Rock. Uh, I, actually, it's one of my favorite hotels because it's so quaint. It's so small, and, uh, you know, you can't, it's hard to get lost in it. 
You know, where I, I go to Caesar's Palace and I have anxiety after a while because I can't figure out how to get the hell out of there. Yeah, yeah. No, it is a fun. It is a fun hotel, and it's always a party. And uh, every which time we play there, old. you know, what's that? I said, which you know, that can get old. That it it's, can. That it's always a, you know, you, sometimes you just want to tune out and shut down. Yeah, mm-hmm. there is a nice gym there, though, so that's good. That's so do you, uh, let, let, let's talk about the running thing a little bit. You know, clearly that's what we're supposed to be about. And, uh, um, you know, I got, got off path here a little bit. But So um, what inspired you to get into running? Have you always been a runner, uh, or did you just take it up? Um, no, I started, um, I guess it's been about 20 years I've been wow. running. And um, I've done, what, four marathons? And uh, which one? Yeah, I just, I which ones did I do? I did Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago, and New York. All right. Um, What's your best time? Uh, three oh two. Wow! Wow! God, dude. Wow! Nice. (laughs) How old old were you when you did that? Um, I guess that would have been New York in, or no, that was uh. That was Kansas City. Let me see. That would have been 96. Okay. Yeah, about 96. Wow. Well, that's 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 a that's a pretty impressive. Uh, very impressive. Yeah. Very very. So may I ask, Richard? So is 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 that a, is that a good distance for you? Do you like? Is that a comfy? Uh, you like? Are you more of a? I mean, clearly you're fast. So. Yeah, I, I I run at a good pace, but um, I mean that's is it? I mean I don't do that. I don't normally do that type of distance. I usually my runs like on the road go between ten to twenty five k. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's that's generally where I sit. I don't do much now. You know, unless. I don't know. I'm not racing anymore, so I'm not. Right. I, I'm. Wait. It's more for fun. I still like to keep a good pace, though. It's just that's a. It's a comfortable. I, I'm more comfortable. It's harder for me to run slowly. Yeah. You know, like I'll run with other people, and sometimes it can be very fatiguing, just because it's not. It's so. I don't know. Just it's, it's difficult to run at a slower pace. For to me. run slower. <laughs> yeah. Richard, do you wear a heart rate monitor when you train? I don't. Should I? Well, you know, if you knew me better, uh, that's kind of my shtick. Uh, I'm really, uh, you know, because I do diagnostics, I do VO2 max testing. Uh, what, I, what I'm all about is encouraging people to learn about the, the cause and effect relationship with the work they're doing uh, and um, how to improve their endurance rather than intuitively, you know, going out and just saying, oh, that, that run felt good or that run didn't feel so good knowing specifically what they're doing before they head out so that they could wrap their head around a program. That's that's really, you know, the the, the meat and potatoes of what uh, I'm all about. Um, so I was just curious, and, and I, if I had a guess, I would have thought probably not. Uh, but um, it, it's an interesting thing to do. Um, rather than, like you suggested, I don't like to run slow. And, you know, you found a niche. You kind of dropped into a distance where you could travel and get your yayas out and feel like you're accomplished in your effort, and then you, you, you get on with your day. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, when I, for example, that 309, if I were you, uh, and I realized that that was a few years back, but you're still, you know, you're still a fairly young fella, you know, um, and given the, the, the nature of, of your business, uh, I would think that uh, uh, there's a chance to break three hours. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, the stamina you must have, Richard, to be on stage for three hours, you know? I mean, that's, you know, that was what I was thinking, the the relationship between your aerobic base from being a runner and and how that parlays into three hours on stage, you know? Um, Right. I think there's a huge... Are you pretty wrung out after after a uh, performance? I'm sorry? Are you pretty wrung out after a performance? Whooped? No, not necessarily. 
I mean, it is, it, it, it's fatiguing, but it's, you know, there's also the adrenaline involved. And yeah. so I'm not that fatigued afterwards. Right. And I mean, I running for me is, it's, it's more of a way to, to ground myself, you know? I feel if I don't run for a few days, I start to uh, feel ungrounded. I start to feel... um, Imbalanced. Yeah. And so it's a way of centering and and it's a form of meditation, you know? Yeah. Totally get it. Any of the other guys you uh, perform with, do do they run as well? Not anymore. Dizzy, our keyboard player, used to run with me and actually was doing really well and was able to, you know, he would hang in there for, you know, like my 10K <laughs> run and be right you? with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was doing great. And then uh, he just fell off um, and he hasn't for the last few years. Um, so I'm generally by myself. Sometimes, um, you know, there are Sebastian Bach, when he was touring with us, he likes to run. Um, but again, he's even though he's very tall, he, he runs at a very uh, much different rate than I do, a uh, pace. So uh, it's a little bit tough. But um, I love having company to run with. It's, do you? Uh, uh, whenever uh, I can find it. Uh, you, you, as you probably huh. gathered, that our our show is to, entitled the Natural Run Natural Running Network Live. We have uh, an organization. Uh, referred to as the Natural Running Network, where we aspire to train people to run off of their midfoot as opposed to heel striking. Right. Uh, I've read about it, but I've never I've never gotten into it. But yeah, yeah. So you're, but you're it fairly is intriguing. traditional in the, your approach to running. Um, I am. I am. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess I'm a bit of a luddite when it comes to running. <laughs> I used to be. Well, you uh, know, and, but I tell you what, it's like you you kind of represent the, the the masses. I mean, there most of the runners in a in a field of marathoners are heel striking, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it's just our our thing has been we're showing people how to get into a better place, uh, so that they minimize the amount of injuries they're facing and. You know, it sounds to me like uh, you know I, I can only I, I've never met you, so I don't know what your build is other than through pictures. But yeah, you, you look to be slight of build, so you probably don't carry enough weight to really cause too much grief on your joints. Uh, do you experience any problems when you run? No, I've been really fortunate. You know, besides, um, but I also I'm pretty diligent with stretching afterwards. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't really had many injuries. So you know the way it the way it rolls out is that about if you look at a field of marathoners, about seventy percent of the field are typically uh, dealing with injuries from their running, and it's, most of it is attributed to the biomechanics, the way they run. And so our focus has been and is to to educate people and show them a better way of running so that they you know minimize the injuries that they're facing. So it was curious to me whether you know you being. Uh, more than what what I assumed you were, with respect to your running, um, whether you d- did any research into it or or thought about changing the way you run or the shoes that you wear when you run. Yeah, I have uh, I have considered it and I've uh, looked at the transition time and um, it, it's something I'd definitely be interested in checking out. You guys well, can tell you what, I, I know that Erica had had uh, mentioned it to you. Uh, in yeah. The- but uh, when you get into our neighborhood, uh, if you're curious, I'd be more than happy to meet with you at my place, and uh, we'll do a video analysis of the way you're moving. And, you know, what I do is I shoot video of you running on a treadmill from the front, from the side, from the back, and we put it up on a big screen, and I have some interesting software that lets me analyze the way you're moving, where your efficiencies are, where your deficiencies are. And then we do a VO2 test and find out what your your lung capacity and your your you know your vital oxygen uptake looks like, and then I can show you where your 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 potential for better performance resides. And um, you know we, we'll do that for you for grins for coming on the show with us. Wow, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. but it's 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 fun. You know, if even if you're you know just a, a recreational runner, you know, and I, and I don't mean you specifically. I mean, you know, any anyone in the listening audience. You know, it's it's. Uh, it's it's neat information to possess about yourself. You know what, you know, 
biomechanically, like Richard said, and, and uh, physiology, you know, what's going on inside with the oxygen and your, your – it, it's cool stuff, cool stuff. Right on. Yeah, uh, for example, we've got a, we've got a guy, uh, a 245 marathoner, uh, mm-hmm. when I met him, and um, we did the test on him, and we identified that when he's running – uh, well, he runs typically. He ran Boston uh, this year, and uh, Boston was terrible this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, uh, he he tries to run and hold his heart rate around 160 plus beats per minute, and it's just a little too hot for him uh, in respect to the amount of work he's doing. And we showed him that where he's really efficient is about 140 beats per minute. And he he clearly felt that, and he was right, that for him to run at that heart rate would be too slow. And uh, through the training we we afforded him, it took about three weeks. And what and what we did is we had him go to a track, and after we tested him, we we had him run a mile on the track without letting his heart rate get over 140 beats per minute. And it took him eight minutes and 30 seconds to run the mile. And after training the way we showed him to train, three weeks out, he did the same test again, and he dropped his time to 6.30 for the same heart rate. Wow. Yeah, so it's a, it's a pretty big deal. And uh, what what you have to look at, and incidentally, you know, to take it a step further, I, I got up on a, on a bicycle and rode along next to him while he was running. Uh, it was a two-hour run, and I followed him for about five miles. And during the five miles, at 140 beats per minute, he held a 6.45 pace, which was basically, you know, like walking for him as far as the effort goes. And wow. he, made the comment, he made the comment that typically he would be able to get his heart rate up as high as 180 beats per minute when he worked out, and now he has a hard time getting it over 160. And the, the point of the matter is, is that 180 beats per minute creates way, way too many calories being exhausted. And at 160, he saves a lot of those calories or energy lost, and he was producing the same time. So that that's kind of the the, the nuts and bolts behind getting tested and why we we bother to do that. So it would be I think it would be fun for you to 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 give it a shot and just see what you learn from it. Yeah, I'd love to do it. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Right. So. Um, Tell us, uh, I mean, we kind of alluded to the tour. I also see you guys are going to go to Mountain View. Is that still on? Um, that's the bridge benefit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And that's Very with cool. Neil Young? Yeah, and Flaming Lips and uh, Jack White. Oh, right on. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I just saw the Flaming Lips here, and they're, uh, they're such a fun band. It's like one of my favorite bands. Cool. That that's cool when you get to I mean, you know, off off running for a minute, but um, I bet when you uh, you know do do a one off like that when you're actually a fan of somebody you might be playing with, you know, sharing the stage with. That's, 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 you know. Well, that's a great thing about doing what we're doing this summer is you know, when you're in Europe, you do all the festivals, and uh, right, it's a right. great way you get to see loads of bands that yeah that uh you know that you want to see and. Yeah, right, and, and right. plus you see old friends, everybody hangs out, so it's always it's always a good time. Oh, I bet. Now, you know, okay, so back to the running, because you, you started to say, you know, you were pulling up an itinerary from over the summer. Um, if you could, you know, it might might not, maybe it's easier said than done, but, okay, so you're over there for a few months. Like, what what is one takeaway moment, like running moment? Like, what's a great city to run in? What's did you hit the trails in one, you know, when you were in, I don't know, some country that you just, st- a standout moment? Like, was, is there one um, city to, uh, to run in, or? There's so many, I mean, Paris, along the Seine. Um, right. London, you can do all four parks, because we always seem to stay on the park, so okay. that's um, that's one of my favorites. Great running city. Um, well, it's just great to be able to do all because all the par- there's four parks that connect. Okay. Uh, um, which is St. James Green Park, uh, Kensington Gardens, and uh, forgetting the other one, but they they're all they also sort of connect. So it's that's a lot of fun, and plus you can do the river, uh, the Thames there. <laughs> so right. um, what's another great one? Um, 
there's some great runs in like St. Petersburg. Uh, Prague is great. Um, and, you know, every you just have to find the right the right runs. It's funny because uh, we I played um, some cities in the south of France. Okay. Uh, that I was there last year when I was on tour with Thin Lizzy last summer. And this summer we hit a lot of the same cities and I ended up doing the same runs, um, you know, from different... <laughs> right, just, different tours. Uh, you know, it's one of those moments where you're like, wow, this all looks so familiar. Wait a <laughs> second, I've been here before. And I'll remember the run, but I won't remember the name of the city, you know, so it's... It, it's it's yeah. great. Those mo- I love those moments. Yeah, but th- there's I went on some fantastic runs in France, you know, oh. with just trails through the woods and uh, and Germany really? as well. Yeah, this, I, I'm I'm so blessed in that that I get to wake up in a new city and you know go go for a new run, completely new run, and that's sort of what I look forward to, and I sort of plan my day around. Yeah. what my run's going to be and I map it out and I know where I'm going to go and, you know, that's my plan. And then if I'm there for a few days, I'll, you know, hit different runs. It's just a, such a great way to see new Absolutely. places. Absolutely. You know? It's it's the best way. You know, you're you're essentially like a, a local. You, you no longer are, you know, simply a, a visitor, you know, would never say tourist, but, yeah, you get to know that city intimately. Like, you, you yeah. if you were just rolling out of the bus into the venue. I mean, for, for goodness sakes, there, I'm sure there are days that you, you know, you roll into a city and you roll off the bus into the venue, you don't even know what the heck city you're in, you know? I mean, you look at the day sheet and you go, oh, right, this is where I am. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you find when yeah, you're in Europe, uh, you get a little bit more, uh, uh, what, what is the word I'm using, uh, looking for? Uh, that you kind of get uh, a little more freedom to to mill about without anybody recognizing you or giving you any grief when you're trying to have some peace. Um, it really depends on where you are. Yeah. You know, um, the, the big cities are always easy for that. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's not that that big of an but issue. You, you, had I, a- you know, in South America was was different. I would have. Because you have to take, secu- we'd have to take security, and so I'd have guys on scooters following me with guns. Oh. You know, like I was just trying to go for a run. And uh, <laughs> but I also did. I, there was one funny moment. Uh, I was running on the beach. I think it might have been like Ecuador. Well, was it Ecuador or I forget where it was. Um, I can picture it, but I was running along a road. There's a beach on one side and uh, like a highway on the other, and. This these guys, the security were in a van following me, and a car <laughs> came and pulled in front of me and pulled off the road, and this woman gets out, and the guys behind me pull up and they all jump out with their guns drawn, and <laughs> and this woman standing there with a piece of paper and a pen. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious, but it's. I mean, that's that's just a little. I, I don't know. I, I find well, they they kidnap people well, over there. That's the deal, right? I I guess so. I guess that's the reason. But um. Oh my you know, gosh, it's kind of a buzzkill. They attack kill. people Forget with it. pens. You don't really get a runner's high when you're followed by yeah. armed men in a van, do you? You get kind of a chase. I, you thing. know, you, I don't know. You sort of block it out, and and it also. I mean, it keeps your pace up because you you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you're running with somebody. There you go. It's you your support vehicle. It's your hydration for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, exactly. my goodness. What, did you uh, tour Columbia? Yes. Now, I'd imagine there you'd need some security. Yeah. Um, Columbia's not that bad. I mean, it's not like Venezuela. You know, that, that was pretty dodgy. Um, there's been some been some hairy ones. I did a great run in uh, Panama uh, huh. through uh, through the, this on this jungle um, path, and that was fantastic. I mean, just seeing sloths and uh, toucans no and tapirs, and yeah, it was it was a lot of fun and monkeys. It was a lot of fun, wow. except for the mosquitoes. But yeah, <laughs> in the Costa wow. Rica. Yep. 
uh, have you seen the crocodiles in Costa Rica? No. Yeah, you don't want to meet one of those while you're running. <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't. I it looked like a submarine. Uh, so big. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty crazy. I was there once, and uh, you know, I, I just couldn't believe people were pulling over to the side of the road to look at these crocodiles, and they they were, you know, with within, you know, they run pretty fast, and it was close enough where, you know, you were actually in danger. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm talking about these things. Honest to God, no no exaggeration, were probably 15 feet long. Right. And probably, you know, three and a half to four feet wide across their back. Just huge, huge things. And so I don't know why I got off on that, but I just thought about running with animals. It just. Uh, wow. But you had a place in Woodland Hills for a while, right? That's right, yeah. And so. And a, good, uh, a friend of mine actually also lives there, and he's an ultramarathoner, um, and he plays guitar with the Colt. Yeah. Ah, Mike, yeah. Michael. Mike, Mike the Serb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's a cyclist, and I, I ride sometimes, and we share share some miles. <laughs> That's that too guy, funny. Yeah, he's yeah. he's an animal, right? <laughs> he's he's, he's really got, intense with it. Yeah, that he's not my an neighbor. Ounce of fat on him. He is lean. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's super lean. Yeah. Now, so yeah. But you know, we, we did a bunch of shows with them this summer. Oh, right. cool. Yeah, they were they were supporting us for a few shows. Wow. Very cool. Yeah, and they were they were just up at the Ventura, the Majestic Theater in Ventura, not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, Ian, I've I've worked with Ian before, the singer, and uh, he's a great guy. And uh, they're all they're all good guys. But yeah, Mike's a real serious. Did, did, did you and Mike get to uh, hit the trails when you were in Europe? We didn't. We kept trying. It mm-hmm. seemed like every day we were trying to to uh, connect and uh, and never were able to. And um, and when I was in Woodland Hills, he said he used to see me running all the time. But <laughs> I guess at that point he knew me, and I didn't know him. But um, it, it's hard. yeah, and our our kids went to school together. Oh, how funny! Small world, right? Yeah, it's so it's so hot in Woodland Hills. Where did you run there? I actually have a client in Woodland Hills, and. Um, he it's, he shows me the the temperatures of the 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 workouts and it's just crazy how hot it gets there. It's pretty ridiculous, but at least there, I always had a much easier time running there than I do in St. Louis. In St. Louis, it gets so humid. Yeah. Um, but I'd run up Canoga to the top, and then there's oh, a yeah. there's a trail. Then it just keeps going up, 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 and then you can come. Mm-hmm. I had this. There were all the coyote trails up there, and that that's what I used to do. Yeah. And I loved running those hills. It was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Now, you, uh, do I dare ask this, you, you take hydration with you? you? You good about taking care of yourself out there? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You know, I, I'm really bad with that, to be honest. I, um... <laughs> Uh, I'm. I never have had hydration issues. Like I'm never. Uh, I, I just. I'm. I guess I wait until I get back and and drink. But I. I don't like to carry water. Carry. I know that's bad. Yeah. yeah. But um, unless I'm going on a really long run, I, I don't. Right. Think about, about enforcing that uh, with my runners. I, I I require that they carry hydration, not just water, but carry. You know, electrolyte replacement with a little bit of, uh, right. you know, like uh, we're, our favorite uh, uh, product is Accelerate, which has a little bit of protein mm-hmm. in it. And, right. you know, you get really good. And, and, you know, back in the day when I was younger, uh, I never, I used to make jokes about running to the beach and getting a mouthful of sand and coming back and spitting it out on the carpet. You know, just really a camel <laughs> about the run. And uh, I come to find out, you know, as I got smarter and older that, um, if I took a little something with me, I always fared far better. Huh. Well, that's yeah. what I was thinking. I, I imagine what you could do to your time. And I know you're not you're not competitively racing these days, but um, imagine. Do a little experiment one time. I'm thinking just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, what that, you say? That nine minutes is bugging the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, no, want, no, 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 no. Two minutes. Oh, two minutes. Two All right. Minutes. Well, even yeah. worse. That's worse. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You need to have like a yeah, 259. You and me both. <laughs> 259.02. Right? Yeah. 
Well, maybe um, you know, I, you know, it's funny you mentioned Boston before, and I think I I had signed up for Boston. I'd qualified three times and and nice. sent my got my place and uh, sent my money in and could never do it because I'd be on tour. Yeah, yeah. That's happened to me so many times. It's happened to me like three times in New York where I couldn't do it. Well, see, and that's what I was going to suggest and, and why I actually didn't put it out there, but, and that is, you know, find a, find that destination race, you know, and, well, how about, how about you do this? Okay, so you've got your itinerary for, you know, the next couple of months or whatever. Why don't you find that destination race in, you know, I don't know. I know you're usually in and out, but I don't know. Yeah, the other thing is, is that the last thing I want to do when – <laughs> on my time off when I'm home with my family is to leave, Determine. you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, even if it's, you know, I don't know, it, it's hard to uh, to justify that. You have, yeah. you have a daughter, right, Richard? What's up? You have a daughter, right? I have two daughters. Two daughters. Uh, yeah. I read somewhere that one of your daughters is uh, extremely intelligent. Wow, yeah, she is. Where'd you read that, man? You really did dig up some stuff. No, I, I, yeah, I took she's... something uh, that suggested that she's like in the, the top 97 percentile. Uh, with 99.8. Yeah. In the oh, yeah. My yeah. And how old is she now? Genius. She is oh six gosh. and a half. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And how old yeah. is your other daughter? My other one is four, and she'll, uh, be, uh, yeah, she'll be five in January. Uh, no. Yeah. Wife out to run? No, no, she's not into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just, we all have to have our own things. Yeah, she's more of a yoga person. I I I wish that uh I wish that she was. You know, all you have to do, I'll just give you a tip. All you have to do to get your wife to run is stop running. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. it works. That's the way it works. And then after yep, she gets I, really excited about running, you can start running again and you'll you end up running together. <laughs> huh. Okay. That's the way it works. Is that, is that yeah, like reverse I, psychology? Yeah, it sounds like you're uh, uh, speaking women from experience. Runners for so long it now. Right, doesn't he, Richard? Sounds like it does. Sorry? <laughs> well, we're just I, saying uh, that it sounds like you're speaking from experience, Richard. Well, yeah, I am. Because what happens <laughs> is uh, I have, you know, I've, I've trained people for, for, you know, close to 30 years now. And and uh, I, it's funny, I get a client that would be a female. And I would work with her for like a year, and she'd be getting really awesome shape. And then she would convince her husband to train with me, and he would be dodging me, dodging me, dodging me for so long. And then finally, get him talked into it, I'd start training him, and she'd quit. And then right. I'd train him for a while, and when he quits, she comes back. And it's wow. funny how it works like that. It's like uh, I, I always know it's like the end, the, the, the kiss goodbye when, when the husband shows up or the wife shows up because the other one right. just, I'm off to do something else now. Yeah. Come, come, uh, anyway, come. whatever it's worth. Uh, I, you know, I train with my as you know, uh, uh, Erica, I train with my wife six days a week. And, yeah. And even better than that, I train her while she's part of a group, and the Lord knows how I've managed to get away with that. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but it's good, you know, because we, uh, we get a chance to get away from the house and, you know, ultimately get a chance – in some occasions, to spend a little time, you know, together. But um, right. I just was curious while you were home if you had a chance. And I assume that because the kids are so young, it's probably hard for her to to not be wrapped up in that all day long. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I for the longest now they're they're too big. I'm transition. It's like that in between time. I'm hoping to get them on both on bikes soon so they can <laughs> they can bike with me. But for the longest time I pushed a double bob Yeah. Uh stroller. That's a good workout, right? <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. It it's difficult. I mean it's it throws you off but Yeah. But uh but yeah it is it was just fun. It was so much fun because they loved it. And you know, within the first mile they were always asleep, both of them. So. Right. <laughs> That's a, almost a, a sure guarantee, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I know the, I love it. the 
kids are cranky, they'll take them for a jog like that and put them right to sleep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I did that for a long time. Used to do that in New York with Paisley when she was little, uh, just a baby. Oh, what a beautiful name. Oh. Yeah, Paisley and Clover. So but, you- uh, yeah, I mean, I I lived in New York for, what, 17 years. I still have an apartment there, and that's uh, – I still love running in New York. Really? Yeah, You're not bothered it's awesome. by the, Really? I mean, I, I get the whole, like, uh, people I, – I don't know. You tell me why you like it, but I'm thinking, God, you got to stop and start and stop. You don't find it disruptive? No, you don't. You no, you it? don't. You just have to no. get in that zone. I used to run yeah. from – I used to live on Park Avenue in 34th, and I used to run the Central Park every day. And I'd run uh, in the middle of traffic. I'd be running up Madison Avenue, and <laughs> – and you just get in that zone where you're hyper aware okay. of everything that's around you, okay. and it, it's like skiing, I think. You know, where you're you're just so you, you're sort of zoned out, but you're okay. incredibly tuned in to everything Very around you. Like you know what's happening behind you, and you know I, I've had crazy, all sorts of crazy stories running in New York, but. Um, you know, jumping over cows and <laughs> crazy oh stuff. Because you get in that sort of that omnipotent mode where you're you're sort of you're you're just so you, you're like superhero type. Right, right, right. Yeah. Thing, you know, and you you you're spinning around people and you're cutting across streets and you're like, you know, it's yeah. but you don't really have to stop and you can. Okay. I don't know. It's it's not bad. Plus now that with the east side, uh, where my apartment is now, I I uh, own a place in the Lower East Side. So I just go to the East River and I can go uptown, or and then cut across to the park, or I can run down or on the bottom of the island and up the west side, which is beautiful. I mean, I don't know if you guys have done those runs, but but the uh, perimeter of the island is of Manhattan is fantastic, and it's. Huh. I used to do my long run days would be going all the way up around the well, go down around the bottom of the island and all the way up to Washington Heights to the GW Bridge, 187th. Okay. You know, okay. which is just I mean, it gets a little sketchy for a while, but it's it's a beautiful run. Huh. Yeah, I'm not I'm not familiar. I I, I can't say so. Uh, I mean, but, you're a trail person, so. <laughs> I, yeah, I, know, I know, right. Yeah, very, very, uh, very different. But but I can appreciate I can appreciate And you painted a very good picture. I, I, I get it, you know. And, and I get that sort of like you're feeding off the energy of the city, so I get that. But there's also a calm in in in, in that. You yeah. know, there's there's a sense of, of tranquility in, in the in that energy. Because you're you're connected, you're you're still you're centered and you're yeah. in your zone and yeah, you know I don't know this I I think it's beautiful I I love running in New York I love like I said a lot of my favorite runs are in are are not just the wilderness runs but the uh, the, right. the city runs you know London. Paris, you know, those those are because they, they're such beautiful environments, and you are surrounded right. with people. And I don't know, I, I think right. it's great. I love doing that. I like I like the yeah. PCH. Yeah, yeah, I like doing that too. Just just uh, having the ocean on your side there, and and no nothing really in in, in your way to have to worry about a light or cross traffic. It's kind of cool. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I like I like doing the uh, from the top of Topanga. And running along the vistas all the way to the sea, yeah. to the ocean, and yeah. back. That's that's a good twelve miler. Yeah. Uh, uh, Richard, we got we got like five minutes left before our show mm-hmm. comes out. Um, is there anything that you wanna you wanna plug? Anything you wanna talk about that uh, you know aside from the running? Which incidentally uh, is a tremendous conversation in respect to your running. I could see uh, how really, passionate I, I, you are about it. Definitely, uh, definitely a, a great passion, and I'm like I said, I'm just so lucky to be able to run in different yeah. places every day. It's it's uh, 
it's definitely a great way to see the world. I'm really oh, excited. Yeah. We're going to um, Guns will be at GNR will be playing at uh, the Hard Rock, as you said, through um, from what Halloween night to How the 24th of November, and then uh, we're also doing the the Neil Young's Bridge School benefit, and then after Vegas we go to India. Which will be my first time in India, so I'm I'm really excited to uh, bring your sneakers. That. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. That that's going to be uh, very interesting. And is, is that another residency or just a, a couple one-offs or, or what? No, no. I think we're playing three shows in India. Nice. Where, where are we playing in India? Um, I don't know. Uh, where are we playing? Delhi. We're playing. Uh, let me see. I'm sure that there's an itinerary around here somewhere. Oh, um, we are playing. Yeah, here we go. Bangalore on December seventh. Mumbai on the ninth. Delhi on the twelfth. Uh, then Taiwan, Manila, Jakarta. Wow. wow. I've got yeah. a boxer in Jakarta that I work with. He's a featherweight champion of the world. A guy named Chris John. Uh, amazing little fella. Um, 126 pounds of just mean. Uh, wow. I'd love to go to Jakarta one day. Uh, I think that's going to be a very good trip for you. Yeah, I've been there before. Um, yeah, tough running. <laughs> yeah. Just that, well, you know, whenever the air quality is bad, I, you really ah, feel it. But, sure. Absolutely. Well, I, listen, I remember I wanna, that being really a problem thank, there. I want to thank mm. you for coming on with us. Um, and remember, mm. uh, that was no joke. I, I am extending this offer to you. Uh, I'm going to take you up on there, that. Get your email address, and I'll give you my contact information. If you ever get in the area, just give me a shout, and let's bring you in and get you sorted out. I think you'll find it fascinating based on what I've learned about you yeah. so far. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really interesting. I'm definitely going to take you up on that. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so yeah, much thanks. for coming on the show. Thank you, And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to connect with you later on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Be safe out there. Okay, we'll do. Thanks, guys. So listen, so, uh, folks, it's time to shut it down. That was a great interview. Um, I really enjoyed hearing from him. And you guys, um, you know, as always, and, Kyle is... Uh, Handing the switchboard. Uh, unfortunately, didn't have much to do today, but Kyle, so you know, I want you to remember, I, I do appreciate what you're doing, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, man. All we, we all do. You're you're the wizard. You're the yeah. man behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. Well, here's one for. There's one for Kyle. <laughs> I've been waiting for that. All right. All right. I'm shutting it down, guys. Everybody say goodbye. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks again, Richard Fortas. Awesome. Yep, thank you. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.